The word gamer had basically been synonymous with the word nerd for years after video games hit the public sphere. People pictured all gamers as skinny, weak males with glasses who did well in school and chose to play video games over having a social life. And that was offensive. But some stereotypes tend to come from a bit of truth. During the advent of gaming, where story and puzzle-driven games were king, kids who played video games actually performed better in school than their peers who spent their free time doing other things. This implies that the children weren't gamers because they performed well in school and they liked nerdy things, but they did well in school because they were gamers. A study published in the journal Frontiers in Human Neuroscience from 2020 found that individuals with a history of childhood gaming had a correlated success on a test made to measure cognitive abilities like visual processing skills, memory functions, and pattern recognition. Its participants included people with both a history of playing video games and those with no experience whatsoever, and the tests were administered three times, once at the beginning of the study, again following a 10-day period where each participant played Super Mario 64, and then a final time 15 days after that. Those who had no history of gaming as a child performed worse on the initial assessment and then caught up to their peers for the second and maintained that improved state into the final examination. This study had a relatively small sample size and so it can't really be counted as conclusive evidence, but it indicated that playing video games improved memory, spatial reasoning, pattern recognition, and attention spans, which relate to higher overall intelligence as these are commonly measured aspects of IQ tests. That study was performed on adults and compared lifelong benefits of gaming, but even for those who are still in school, correlations of success can be found. The best way you can learn something is by just trying it out, and with the ways that games have been shaped and optimized where knowledge is the quickest road to success, solving a game oftentimes comes down to more than just trying things out and seeing what sticks. Role-playing games, or RPGs, are typically steeped in math and reading and the player's progression hinges almost entirely on how deep their understanding goes. Whether it's playing Pokemon and calculating how many more hits you can take, based on the amount of damage taken compared to your HP total, or playing Zelda and determining what location is the way forward based on obscure hints or clues, RPGs provide an introduction to skills that will immediately become useful in a school setting. Standardized tests are commonly used to determine academic success, and typically revolve around the categories of reading comprehension, math, grammar, and science in the United States. Reading comprehension and math are covered by solving puzzles, reaching story development points, and working with stat blocks to determine whether one item is better than another by comparing statistics or effects in game. Grammar is definitely covered better in a school setting where a student can learn the rules of language, but the more students are exposed to the language, the better off they will be when something in a sentence seems off. And the science portions are often a blend of math and reading comprehension, where students are expected to spot trends and draw conclusions based on them. When a student has been playing games and utilizing these skills in a way that affects whether or not they succeed in a hobby they enjoy, it naturally reinforces their use both in the classroom and out in the world. Having the ability to relate something you did in a video game to what you're learning in class makes your academic work significantly easier to understand and can create a foundation that higher level academic concepts can build off of. On top of that, if you're able to sit down and play a game for many hours long marathons, it can improve your ability to focus on something for long periods of time, leading to an improvement in attention which is invaluable when these testing sections can be hours long on their own. These comparisons aren't just coming out of thin air by the way. The Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology looked at data from high school students in Australia and found that those who played video games had significantly better scores in math, reading, and science portions of standardized tests. Columbia University also found that children between ages 6 and 11 who played more than 5 hours of games per week had a chance of high intellectual functioning and high overall school competence that was almost double that of their peers. There's an interplay between academics and gaming, where you need knowledge to succeed in both and the concepts you learn in one can assist in the other. But in some cases, it is possible for one part of your life to cannibalize the other, as both tend to be relatively time-consuming. Many of the studies performed are criticized, because it is exceptionally difficult to prove that the children become smarter due to their time playing video games, and not just that smarter children are more inclined to play games in the first place, as well as how the methodology focuses on standardized testing rather than grade point averages which actually have a negative correlation with more frequent gaming. GPAs as a measure of academic success actually decreases as the amount of time spent gaming increases. 
Psychology Today reports their beliefs that GPAs decrease and that gamers actually experience a lower amount of academic success due to a combination of factors, including the time displacement hypothesis, where the time spent playing video games means less time can be spent on academic activities, the sleep displacement hypothesis, where gamers sleep less than other students, leading to less success in the classroom, and the attention deficit hypothesis, where prolonged gaming can lead to students paying less attention when in class. Each of these are entirely plausible, and whether gaming makes you smart or makes you stupid depends on what form of academic success an individual chooses to be more important. When gaming is found to increase scores on standardized tests and decrease grade point averages, the studies performed are naturally going to split the argument down the middle, depending on which form of success is viewed as more important in the researcher's eyes. It is entirely possible that all of the studies discussed are accurate and provide effective data, as high standardized test scores and low GPAs are not mutually exclusive. A student can choose to play video games rather than effectively completing homework, leading to a lower GPA but then can succeed when it comes to performance on tests. Early schooling puts a significant amount of focus on completing a series of small tasks that some can view as unimportant or a waste of time, leading to a lack of overall effort on their completion. That, combined with the lack of sleep that gamers definitely tend to get, can lead to a lack of participation in the classroom, causing teachers to believe their habits are harmful. But it's a precarious balance that many of the gamers that are covered in these studies keep. Determining what is important to succeed on and how best to learn ultimately comes down to the individual. So there may never be a straightforward answer on if video games are harmful or helpful from an academic standpoint, especially as games change and the style of games people are playing shift as well. An additional study found that those who played mostly multiplayer games tended to have lower reading scores, implying that these non-story driven gaming experiences don't provide the same amount of reading comprehension growth that single player games can give. It makes sense, as jumping into a Call of Duty lobby isn't going to provide you with as much reading as you would playing through something like Persona or The Witcher. The expectation that playing video games is a waste of time from an academic standpoint may be something of a self-fulfilling prophecy, as gamers move more towards online experiences where the only reading is whether or not they see Victory Royale at the end of the match. But I am a firm believer that story-driven games will remain helpful for students and even adults as they move through life trying to learn. I try to remain as unbiased as possible throughout this video, finding studies that cover both ends of the argument. But I have to admit that I owe a lot of my early academic growth to video games. I fell into the camp of bad in school, good on tests, where I would blow off homework or assignments because I figured my GPA was just some arbitrary number and my priorities were messed up. I graduated high school with a 2.6 GPA, so a solid C student. But I managed to get into a good college because of a top 99th percentile ACT score. But I can't recommend to anyone to try what I did. Pokemon taught me how to read and do math when I was four years old, and it gave me a huge head start on those around me. I can only imagine what I could have accomplished if I just put my head down and put in the work that I really needed to to succeed. If any of you are still in middle school or high school, go do your homework. Just a little bit of time away from games will go a long way, and if you end up going to college, it'll help you so much more when you can't just breeze through school and not put any work in. That's all I have for you guys now, though. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will catch you later.